whoever prefers the material comforts of life over intellectual wealth is like the owner of a palace who moves into the servants' quarters and leaves the sumptuous rooms empty. Even a stopped clock is right twice every day. After some years, it can boast of a long series of successes. What delights us in visible beauty is the invisible. Oh happy pessimists! What a joy it is to them to be able to prove again and again that there is no joy. If you have one good idea, people will lend you twenty. The poor man wishes to conceal his poverty, and the rich man his wealth. The former fears lest he be despised, the latter lest he be plundered. Deep learning doesn't shine. Little evil would be done in the world if evil never could be done in the name of good. He who believes in freedom of the will has never loved and never hated. Pain is the great teacher of mankind. Beneath its breath souls develop. We don't believe in rheumatism and true love until after the first attack. Privilege is the greatest enemy of right. None are so eager to gain new experience as those who don't know how to make use of the old ones. So soon as a fashion is universal, it is out of date. Conquer, but don't triumph. We are so vain that we even care for the opinion of those we don't care for. To have and not to give is often worse than to steal. An aphorism is the last link in a long chain of thought. Do not consider yourself deprived because your dreams were not fulfilled, the truly deprived have never dreamed. I regret nothing says arrogance, I will regret nothing, says inexperience. Not what we experience, but how we perceive what we experience, determines our fate. Those whom we support hold us up in life. Many think that when they have confessed a fault there is no need of correcting it. Distrust your judgment the moment you can discern the shadow of a personal motive in it. The little bit of truth contained in many a lie is what makes them so terrible. Marie von Ebner Eschenbach, the 13th of September 1830, she was born at the castle of the Dubsky von Trebomyslice family in Zadilowitz near Kromeris in Moravia, present Zdislavis in the Czech Republic. Was an Austrian writer. Noted for her psychological novels, she is regarded as one of the most important German language writers of the latter portion of the 19th century. The daughter of Baron from 1843, Count Franz Joseph Dubsky von Trebomyslich, a nobleman whose family roots are deeply Catholic and Bohemian, and his wife Maria Rosalia Therese, Baroness von Wackel, who came from a noble Protestant Saxon background. Marie lost her mother in early infancy, but received a careful intellectual training from two stepmothers, first Baroness Eugenie von Bartenstein, and then her second stepmother, Countess Zaverin von Kolorat Krakowski who often contributed to her inspiration by taking her to the Bergwader Town Theatre, Citizens Theatre, from time to time in Vienna. Despite being part of a noble family having access to her family's vast libraries, she was never actually formally schooled. However, because of her curiosity, access to information, an educated family, she became autodidact at a young age, and was taught fluent French, German, and Czech. 
Marie began devoting herself to literary work. In her endeavors she received assistance and encouragement from Franz Grillparzer and Freiherr von Munch Bellinghausen. Her first publicized work was the drama Maria Stuart in Scotland German. Maria Stuart in Schotland which Philip Eduard Devriant produced at the Karlsruhe Theater in 1860. Then came a tragedy in five acts. Marie Rowland, with several one-act dramas, Doktor Ritter, Violet's German, Das Veilchen and the Disconsolate One. Though she was encouraged to keep writing, her relative failure in the field of playwriting had actually become somewhat of a point of an embarrassment to her family. After these limited successes in the field of drama, she turned to narrative. Commencing with Die Prinzessin von Banelian, 1872, she graphically depicts in Bojena, Stuttgart, 1876, 4th ed., 1899. And Das Gemindekind Berlin, 1887, 4th ed., 1900. The surroundings of her Moravian home, and in Lottie, Die Jermischeren, Berlin, 1883. 4th ed. 1900. Sway Comtessen, Berlin, 1885, 5th ed. 1898. Unsenbar, 1890, 5th ed. 1900. And Glaubens Lohs, 1893. The life of the Austrian aristocracy in town and country. Much of Ebner Eschenbach's more mainstream success is accredited to Julius Rodenberg due to his publishing Ebner Eschenbach's work in his popular periodical, Die Deutsche Rundschau. Ebner Eschenbach also published New Year's Allungen, Berlin, 1881, 3rd ed. 1894 Aphorismen, Berlin, 1880, 4th ed. 1895, and Parabelm, March and Und Gedicht, 2nd ed., Berlin, 1892. In 1875, her half-sister, composer Julie Waldberg Wurzach, used her social contacts at Kata Verlag, today Klet Kata Verlag, to market some of Ebner Eschenbach's work. Von Ebner Eschenbach's elegance of style, her incisive wit and masterly depiction of character give her a foremost place among the German women writers of her time. On the occasion of her 70th birthday the University of Vienna conferred upon her the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, honoris causa. An edition of Marie von Ebner Eschenbach's Jessamelt Schriften collected works began to appear in 1893 Berlin. Throughout her life, she had never created literature or plays for monetary reasons, and so, in her will, she left, as to aid other writers in their own endeavors, the compensation she had received. She died in Vienna, Austria-Hungary. The Marie Ebner Eschenbach Park in Waring, Vienna, is named after her.